Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for October 31st, 2018. Before I get into the word, I do want to say that uh, I, obviously I'm back from the Dominican Republic. Uh, we did look at several pieces of land. We do. Uh, we found one that we believe is the, the piece of land that the Lord wants us to have. And so uh, thank you for your prayers while I was gone. But the, the land over there is fairly complicated, getting titles free and clear. So that we're in the process of, of believing God for that family to go ahead and just uh, get the title free and clear, get the paperwork ready so that we can secure the land and build the school uh, and the church that we want to do uh, build over there. Right now we're running in two places. And we're, we're excited about having our own place in the Dominican Republic for our children and it's a great time. So let's get into the word for today. I've been teaching on the, the life of David and we're going to go back to it today. So this is standing on a word from God, part 43 and then part 15 of the life of David. I'm calling this the Lord through you. On this morning, this Monday morning, as you seek to set the tone for the whole week, I, the Lord wants me to remind you that he is the one who lives in you. John 14 and 10, Jesus said, it is the father living in me. He gives me the words and he performs the work. It is the Lord through you. He is living in you if you're born again and he wants to live through you. And so that's what we'll deal with on today. But we've been studying the life of David. So let's go back to the story. When we left off the story, David was walking into the valley of Elah to, to fight Goliath, right? And so, but I want, I, I just want you to kind of picture this upon the canvas of your mind. Just, just pause for a moment wherever you are and just, just, just receive this picture. So you have two mountains and, and a valley in between them, the Valley of Elah. On, on each mountaintop, there's an army. The armies are mustered and they're facing each other. The only thing that's separating them is this valley. And then from each side proceeds, you know, one man right down into the valley. And so on the Philistine side, the one who proceeds down into the valley, this man is a giant. I mean, he's huge. He's over nine feet tall and he is covered with armor from head to toe. And then trailing the giant is his armor bearer because this man has a shield that's so big that it takes a second man to carry it. So the giant is walking down into the valley covered in armor from head to toe. He has a javelin with a head on it and the head of the javelin weighs 15 pounds. His armor weighs 125 pounds and his shield is so big that it takes a second man to carry it. And he's walking down into the valley like that, right? And then um, from the other side <laughs> comes someone else and from the Israelite side. And it is clear that this man is no giant. Matter of fact, he's not even a man. He's a boy and he's coming out from the ranks. And it's clear that it, not only is he not a giant, He's not even wearing armor. He doesn't even look like a soldier. He, he's more dressed like he's ready for chores than he's ready for battle. He doesn't have a sword. He doesn't have a shield. He doesn't have any armor. He's never even trained with any of that stuff. All he has is a shepherd's staff and a slingshot and five smooth stones. But wait, this little boy has something else. He has the grace of God. I know you can't see it. It's not something physical you can see, but it's supernatural. It's the hand of God that was on him. He has the grace of God. Yes, he has a stick. Yes, he has five smooth stones. Yes, he has a slingshot, but he has the grace of God. The hand of God was on his life. He was anointed. About a few weeks earlier in this story, he was a nobody from nowhere, but now he is the, the hand of God is on his life. He was anointed to be the next king of Israel. He was called for such a time as this. He's walking down into that valley and the entire nation, the, the, the fate of the nation is resting upon his shoulders. Everything that Israel was is resting in the hands of David, but David's hands were in the hands of God. So while their hands were in his hands, uh, th their future was in his hands. His future was in God's hands and he's walking down and he's ready for the fight. This is where we pick up the story. This is first Samuel uh, chapter 17 verses 41 to 47. Goliath walked toward David and he sneered in contempt as he looked at his opponent. He said, am I a dog that you come at me with a stick? And then he went on to curse David with all of these cursings from the names of their gods. See, but Goliath did not know that you cannot curse what God has already blessed. Glory to God. And David was already blessed. So Goliath went on to say, come over here and I'm going to give your flesh to the wild animals. And David stood there unfazed. He didn't have on any armor, but he was unfazed. All he had was a slingshot and a stone, but he was unfazed. Phase. Unlike Saul and his men who were terrified by the giant, David was not terrified at all. David said, now you come at me 
with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of the heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. You see what I'm saying? Now he's, he's looking at this on a whole nother level. You're looking at this like a man. And I'm looking at this from God's perspective. God is on me. This is a spiritual thing. It's not just a physical thing. David was down there. He wasn't just there for hand to hand combat. He wasn't just there for mano a mano, just man to man. No, no. David was there as an emissary of God. He was going to let everyone present that day know that he was representing God and that this giant had defied the God of Israel. And so he was like, you defy the God of Israel. This is what's going to happen to you. So David said today, the Lord will conquer you. Listen to how he's talking. He says today, the Lord will conquer you and I will cut your head off. And then I'm going to give your body to the birds and to the wild animals and the whole world would know that there is a God in Israel and everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with a sword and not with a spear. Listen, let me tell you something. David said, this is the Lord's battle and he will give you to us. This is the Lord's battle, man. The Lord is going to conquer you and I'm going to cut your head off. That's what he said. So what does this mean to you today, man? This is some good stuff. I love this story. And this is, this is a young man that's standing on a promise from God, on a word from God, that the hand of God is on his life to do the seemingly impossible. And this is how we're supposed to live. What does this mean to you today on this Monday morning? I have two things to share with you today. Let's get into them. You ready? Here we go. Number one, you have nothing to fear. Look at me for a minute. Let me make sure you get this. You right now have nothing to fear. Fear is not the will of God. The statement fear not, right? So, so be not afraid or fear not in some form. That statement is in the Bible over 300 times. Fear not, be not afraid. Do not allow your heart to be troubled. Listen, do not be afraid. Fear is not the will of God. Fear is never the will of God. If you're afraid, you're not in faith. Fear cancels out your faith, just like faith will cancel out your fear. Fear is not the will of God. A king and an entire army were paralyzed by fear because they were looking at things through their lens and not looking at things from the perspective of God. But a shepherd boy, David, looked at this giant Goliath and he said, listen, this man is going to go down because God is going to make him go, go down. He was anointed. He was looking at the situation through the lens of faith. He was not moved by fear at all. He had faith in God. He had nothing to fear. When you live by faith, you have nothing to fear. Listen, Fear has no power over you. You have no, I don't care what giant you're facing this morning on this Monday morning. You have nothing to fear. When you look at any situation from God's perspective, when you look at it through the lens of faith, you will quickly realize that you have nothing to fear. There is nothing that God can't do. And God is the one who lives in you. And so if he's the one living in you, giving you the words and performing the work, if he's the one living in you, great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If God is in you and there's nothing God can't do, then there's nothing you can't do. You can do all things, Philippians 4 and 13, through Christ who strengthens you. He's the one living in you. There's nothing too hard for you because there's nothing too hard for God and God is the one living in you. Number two, I only have two things to share with you on this morning. Number two, you are called to live a life of faith. You and I, we are the just and the just shall live by faith. You are called to live a life of faith. David's confidence was not in his power, his ability, or his strength. It wasn't human at all. David's confidence was in God. He said to Goliath, listen what he said. He said, today, the Lord will conquer you. Listen, I'm telling you, man, you don't mess with the wrong one. Now God is on me and God is in me and God is with me and God is for me. No, you, you, you should have went to mess with somebody else. No, you, you chose to mess with the armies of the living God. No, no, you defied the God of Israel. You should have defied some other nation, but you mess around and touch the wrong nation. You touch the nation who's, who's, God is the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And so you got to know what you got to look at this thing through through the lens of God. He said the Lord is going to conquer you. You got to look at your situation and says the Lord is going to conquer this thing. It's not me. It's the Lord that's going to do it. David went on to say this is the Lord's battle and he will give you to us. He looked at a giant and said, listen, you messed around and got you touched the wrong dude. Now God is is involved in this situation. And that's what you got to do when you got a situation that the doctors can't deal with. God is involved in this situation. You got a situation where you, you, you got more month than money. You got to get God involved in that situation. Glory to God. There's nothing that God can't do. See, when you live by faith and you, you, God is going to lead you to launch out 
to attempt the seemingly impossible like David was launching out to do. But you got to know that it's God living in you. He's the one living in you. He's the one performing the work. He's the one that's going to do it. Not you. Your confidence is in him. It's not about you. David said, watch this, the Lord will conquer you. But then he went on to say, and I'm going to cut your head off. Did you catch that? He said, he says, the Lord is going to conquer you. But then he went on to say, and I'm the one that's going to cut your head off. See, this is, this is a challenge sometimes for people who live by faith. Yes, God is going to lead you to do things. And yes, God can do things for you. But most of the time, God is going to lead you by faith to go do it. And so he says, the Lord is going to conquer you. But I'm the one that's going to go cut your head off. I'm going to let, let you know. Now, I'm not the, it's not me. It's the Lord doing it. But I still got to go do it. I'm not going to sit back. This is where people mess up. You, you, you're believing God for something and then you just sit back. Like, for example, we, we're believing God for land in the Dominican Republic. Well, guess what? I had to get on a plane and go. And then I had to drive around and look for the land. I'm not going to just sit back and say, OK, well, the Lord wants us to have some land in the, in the Dominican Republic. I'm just going to wait for the land to come to me. I'm going to wait for somebody to call me. I'm going to wait for somebody to email me. Well, you're going to be waiting a long time. No, I got on a plane. I went out there. I believe God. I said, Lord, show me the land. We drove around. We looked for it and we found the land that I believe is, is the Lord leading us to have it. You see what I'm saying? So David said the, the Lord is going to conquer you, but I'm the one that's going to cut your head off. You just can't wait. For everything, God, now there's some things that God will tell you, don't do, don't do anything, don't move. Okay, fine. In those situations where God tells you don't move, don't move. But but most of the time, living by faith means you're going to get your happy self up and you're going to go do what God is leading you to do, even when it seems impossible, even at the risk of looking foolish. If God is telling you to go, you have to go believing that he is the one that is going to do the work through you. It is the father living in you. He will give you the words and he will perform the work. Last thing I'll say is this. If the Lord leads you to do something that is clearly beyond your power, your ability, your strength, your finances, clearly beyond you, it is because he's the one. He wants to flex his muscles. He wants to do it in a way that he is going to get the glory. So you have to allow him to do it. For him to operate in your life, you have to cooperate with him. You have to allow him to do it. Make a decision right now, this morning, this Monday morning, that you are going to have faith in his ability, that you are not going to shirk, that you are not going to back down, that you are not going to shudder, that you are not going to fear, that you are a man or woman of faith, and that you are going to believe God, and that you're going to launch out to do what he leads you to do, even at the risk of looking foolish. And it doesn't matter what people say, and it doesn't matter what people think. I, you are going to believe God to attempt things that, that, that only he can do. And once you're out there at the risk of looking foolish, then God can manifest himself like he did in the life of David, and he will get the glory from your life and your living. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith this Monday morning. I want you to say this now. I want you to open up your mouth and say this, but you got to believe and receive it. You got to say this from a believing heart. You ready? Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. I expect you, Father, to do all that you plan to do in my life before I was born. I cooperate with you so you can operate through me. I enter this day ready to slay any giant that stands before me. <laughs> By your spirit, I am able to see the invisible and perform the impossible because it is you, Father, who lives in me. You give me the words and you perform the work through me this day for all the world to see. This is why, Father, I am quick to give you the glory for everything you do through me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, then go to todaysword.org and there's a subscribe button on, on the right hand side of the website. Subscribe, get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. Listen, you head into this day determined that if you're born again, God is the one who is on you and in you and with you and for you. He will give you the words. He will perform the work. He will send you into a meeting that you that prior, you know, in, in your ability, you would be terrified to be in. He will he will open up a door for you and you walk into a room that you've never been in before in an environment that you've never been in before. And that that there there was a time in your life where where you would have ran from that environment. But now the grace of God is on you to grow into it. And he will give you the words. He'll perform the work. You, you rest in him. You believe God. This is a season of supernatural harvest for you. Open up your heart for God's harvest. Believe God and launch out to experience victory. And then 
before you leave the screen, please share this message with someone that you know so that we can let everyone everywhere know about Jesus. God bless you.